Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Here's the breakfast that brings cheers from coast to coast. The breakfast that wins praise from many a top action Hollywood movie star. It's Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with milk or cream and fruit. These king size, ready to serve premium grains of rice or wheat are shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender as nuts in November. Tomorrow, sure, try this economical deluxe breakfast treat. You'll cheer, too, for Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Gil Baxter went to the Yukon Territory to make easy money. From among the rough men who hoped to profit from the work of others, he selected two to form a small gang. Within a short time, Gil Baxter's gang was known and feared from Dawson to Whitehorse. And because they had been able to evade the law and cover their tracks well, Gil Baxter began to think of himself as invincible. He and his small gang struck ruthlessly and often. Uh, hi, Jed. Uh, well, well, uh, you look sort of happy and chipper this afternoon. <laughs> yep, uh, reckon I do. These two bags is filled with gold dust, and I finally got that claim of mine to pan out on my way to the bank right now. Well, I'm mighty glad to hear it. You've been working up there for quite some time. Yeah, I thought I'd never make a strike. I got a chance to sell the claim, too. I reckon those folks of gold are what we come here for, mister. Well, hey. You better not try to stop us either. Grab them, Frank. Right, Jill. I got them. Oh, wait, you can't steal that gold. I worked hard to get that. I won't let you. No, no. <laughs> oh. More guff out of you and you'll get a bullet. All right, let's go, Frank. Jay's waiting with the horses. Right. Hey, Luke, don't get away. I gotta get someone to stop him. Get the constable. That's a Gil Baxter gang. Again in Selkirk, Gil and his men entered the express office in broad daylight. What can I do for you? Just sit right where you are and don't try to pull any funny business. It's a holdup. Now, see here, he I... He said to sit there, didn't he? Oh, oh. That's just a sample of what you might get, mister. Get the stuff from the safe, Jay. I sure will. Keep him covered. I'll get the cash from the till. There's plenty here in the safe. I've got it all. Good. Hurry it up. Somebody might come in. I won't let you rob this office. Go for your gun, huh? Oh, oh, yeah, and make another move in the next bullet. It'll fix you for good. Come on, let's get going, boys. All right. The most recent escapade of Gil Baxter and his gang started when one of the men overheard some talk in a White Horse cafe and reported it to Gil in their hotel room. Where you been, Frank? Over the cafe. I heard something there that might interest you, Gil. Yeah, what'd you hear? I hope it's something that'll get us some dough. I think it'll get us plenty. Gil decides to get to work on it. All right, let's hear it. Now, listen, boss. A couple of prospectors were in the cafe. They were telling the barkeep about an old sourdough made a strike a few miles from here on the North Trail. Yeah, yeah, go on. The old sourdough's name is Pop Baker. Lives out there alone with his 10-year-old grandson. Now, he hasn't brought his take into town. Thinks he's got a better hiding place right out there for his gold. Ah, sitting out there waiting for us to take it, huh, Frank? Yep, that's what I was thinking of. 
Just an old codger and a kid out there would be a cinch. It sure would. What about it, Gil? What do you think? We'll go out there and make them tell where it's hidden and grab it. Well, what's wrong with going out there right now? No, 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 no. We'll wait until late tonight. It don't get completely dark at night in the summer up here. There'll be less chance of people see us riding out of town. No use making them suspicious. That's a good idea. After we grab the gold, we can double back and head for Skagway. Yeah, that's what we'll do. <laughs> Maybe after that night, that old sourdough will learn to keep his mouth shut about his gold. That's right, He boy. sure will. Early that evening, Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, followed the North Trail on their way to Upper Labarge. They stopped for a short visit with Pop Baker and his grandson, David. Hold my game. Easy now. <laughs> Come along, King. Well, well, Sergeant Preston and King. We heard you stopping out here, and Davy said he's sure it was you. Oh, Sergeant. Oh, I'm glad to see you again. <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, come on in. Come on in. Thanks, Mr. Baker. We couldn't pass without stopping to say hello to you and David. Could we, King? <laughs> well, here you are. Just sit right here, Sergeant. Oh, thanks. Grandpa found a lot of gold. Honestly. Now, Davy, let me tell the Sergeant about it. I heard something about it in town. Is it really true? Yeah. At last I struck it. I got plenty hid away. So I heard. Don't you think it's risky to hide your gold, Mr. Baker? Why not take it into the bank in Whitehorse? Well, first of all, Sergeant, I don't trust them banks. And then again, I want it where I can look at it once in a while to make <laughs> sure I've really got it. I know how you feel. But I still think you're making a big mistake to keep it here. I'll be back this way tomorrow. Why don't you plan to ride into town with me and deposit your gold where it'll be safe? Well, if you think I ought I most to... certainly do. You see, since I heard about your gold, others have heard about it, too. There are a good many men in the Yukon who wouldn't hesitate to try to get it from you. <laughs> well, they'll have to find it first. I got a mighty good hiding place for it. But uh, since you think I ought to, I'll take it to town tomorrow when you come back this way. Good. That's a sensible thing to do. Well, we have to get along. Oh, I wish King didn't have to leave you. I want to have him to play with a little while. Well, tell you what, David. Suppose I leave King here with you until tomorrow. Would you like that? Oh, golly, would you, honest? Of course, if your grandfather doesn't object. Huh. If I had my way, King would stay here all the time. <laughs> How would you like that fella, huh? All right, then I'll stop by tomorrow on the way back. Stay here, King. Stay with David. <laughs> he hates to have me go without him, but he'll enjoy being with you, David. Bye till I get back. Bye, Goodbye, Sergeant. Goodbye, Sergeant. Goodbye. Steady, Blackie. Get up there. It was about two hours later when Gil Baxter with Frank and Jay rode up to the Baker cabin and reined to a halt. Oh, 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 oh. Steady, fellow. Now, don't forget. Act nice so we can get inside without the old man getting suspicious. Come on. Right. Hey, he's got a dog in there. That's not good, Gil. Don't worry. Leave it to me. As they waited, Pop unlocked the door and opened it only a crack. The old man peered out cautiously at the three figures standing in the eerie light of the Yukon night. Then he spoke. Well, what do you want? All right, Mr. Baker. There's nothing to be worried about. What is it you want, mister? <laughs> I brought a message for you from town. I was... Well, that dog's barking makes it hard to talk. Quiet, Dave. Quiet, King. You don't seem to want to mind you. Davy, take King and shut him in the back room. Here, King. Yeah, there, dog shut in the back room. Come in now if you want. Well, thanks. We won't stay long. Now, uh, what is it you've got to tell me? Frank, get over there and turn the key in the door to that room where the dog is. Right. Hey, why are you locking King in there? He can't come out with the door closed. We don't take any chances, kid. Now, Pop, let's get to the point. Where's all that gold you got hit around there? Now, speak up. That gun. So you come here after my gold, huh? Well, you see, he admits he's got gold here, Gil. Grandpa, make him go away. Shut up, kiddie. You get a good clout in the ear. He's only critters of thieves, Davy. Come to steal my gold. Sergeant Preston says someone might hear about it and come here. Sergeant Preston? Uh, he must be talking about that money. He's got the dog, Gil. Yeah, and that's the sergeant's dog, King, in the back room. If he gets out here, he'll make you leave, I bet you. Oh, so that's the great dog we've been hearing about, huh? Yeah, we'll see that he don't get out of here. Now, where's that gold hidden, Pop? You 
better tell me if you know what's good for you. Since you come after it, you can just hunt until you find it. I'm not telling you where it is. He's wasting our time, Gil. If that dog's here, maybe the Mountie's coming back soon and the old man's stolen for time. Sergeant Preston will come back tomorrow and then you will be Hush sorry. up, Davey. You shouldn't have told him. I'm glad you did tell us, kid. Now we know we don't have to rush things. Oh, golly, Grandpa. I'm sorry. It's all right, son. Make the old codger talk, Gil. Maybe if we give him a going over, he'll tell us. You can beat me all you want, but I won't tell you anything. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Frank, grab the kid. Sure. <coughs> I got him. Let me go. Hold still. Let me go. Here now. You let that boy alone, you hear? Yeah, the dog knows there's something wrong out here. King gets out here, he'll be sorry. He won't get out. Now, Pop, if you don't want to see us slap this kid around, you better tell us where that gold is hidden. And you better talk quick. Otherwise, this boy's going to suffer plenty. Now start talking. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Man, oh man, here's a breakfast treat. It's got them all beat. It's Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. These famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals are shot from guns. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat <laughs> and Quaker puffed rice are choice premium wheat or rice grain shot from guns. <laughs> They're giant size, king size, colossal. They're actually exploded up, up, up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Yes, that's what makes wheat or rice shot from guns so crisp and tender. They're shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. Even more important, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are nourishing. Yes, both delicious kinds furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. They are quick and easy to fix. For breakfast, lunch, supper, or tween meal snack. Just pour them out from those big Quaker red and blue packages. Add milk or cream, top with your favorite fruit. And there you have it. A nutritious, economical, deluxe taste treat. Buy both delicious kinds. For variety, eat Quaker puffed wheat one time, Quaker puffed rice the next. Just remember, they're never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original, crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns... Always look for the smiling Quaker man on the front of each big red and blue package. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue our story. Gil Baxter and his small gang were trying to force Pop Baker to tell where his gold was hidden. They threatened to hurt David unless he told them. You heard what I said. Speak up or we start working on that kid. You won't like seeing him get knocked around. Grandpa, they can let me go. Oh, still, kid. Uh, now wait, wait, mister. I guess you win. Now you're getting some sense. Come on, tell me, where is it? Under, under the floorboards in the corner over there. See if he's telling the truth, Dave. All right. It won't take a minute to find out. There's a couple of loose boards, all right. Is it gold down there? Yeah. Here are a couple of small bags. It's a gold, all right. Hey, what do we do now, Gil? Tie the two of them up and gag them. Hurry up about it. All right. While go. Gil held the gun, the other two tied and gagged Pop Baker and David. Then they carried them to the cot and left them there. Hey, that's done. What about that dog in the back room, Gil? If he should get out somehow, he might track us. I'll settle that mutt right now. Frank, go unlock the door. And you and Jay put your weight against it and open it just a crack. Now, don't let the dog get through. Come on. Hey, now what? Open it a crack, like I said. And be careful. What are you going to do? I'm going to plug that dog, that's what. Now, you lunge at the door so I'll have a good chance. All right, I'm ready. Now, go ahead. Pull it open a little. All right. Now, keep your weight against it, Jay. Here it goes. Quick, Gil, he's trying to get out. Give it to him. This will settle him. I got him. Now, let's get away from here. Yeah. What about that Mountie coming here tomorrow? <laughs> Without his dog, he won't be able to trail us. We can cover up by riding in the crickaways. Circle around White Horse and head for Skagway. Now, hurry up. <laughs> Easy, boy. Get up. Get up there. Get up. For 
Some time, the great dog king lay still. Thinking the dog was dead, the crooks had left the door open between the rooms. But the bullet had just grazed the top of King's head, stunning him for the time being. Finally, the dog stirred. Then, with a whine, he rose shakily to his feet. For a few moments, King stood looking around. Then, as his brain cleared, he walked slowly into the main room where Pop and David lay bound and gagged. King walked over to David and whined. Then, as he saw David struggle, the intelligent dog realized the boy was tied. Putting his front paws on the edge of the cot, King sniffed at the cord that bound David's hands, then started gnawing at the cord. In a few moments, the cord parted, and David reached up and removed the gag from his mouth. King, I thought you were killed. You have to get the cord from my feet. There. Now I'll untie Grandpa. Within a short time, Pop Baker was also free. And as he and David stood rubbing their chafed wrists, King whined and sniffed at the door. David, they got my gold, every bit of it. But when Lucky King was here and they didn't kill him. Here, King. Yes, just like I figured. The bullet just creased the top of King's head. Get a cloth and a little water, David. Yes, sir. Poor fella. You tried to keep him out in the first place, didn't you, King? Here's the cloth and water. Yeah, good. Now, here, King. This will help you a bit. Ah, easy, fella, easy. There, yeah, that'll feel better now. He wants to get out. Maybe he wants to follow them, Grandpa. Maybe that's it, Davy. They've got guns and they'll really kill him this time. If Sergeant Preston was here, I bet he'd go with King and get back your gold. Sergeant Preston. That's it. You see, Davy? King knows that we're talking about his master. He's a well trained dog. Maybe if I told him to, he'd go and get the sergeant. Oh, do you think so? Well, it's worth trying. Get Sergeant Preston, King. Get Sergeant Preston. Go get Preston, fella. He knows what you said. He keeps running toward the door and then back. Yes. I reckon he does know. Get him out now. Get Preston, King. Go get him. Get Preston. It was several hours later when Sergeant Preston, who was sleeping in the cabin of the constable at Upper Labarge, was awakened by barking and scratching at the cabin door. What's that? Sounds like my dog, King, but I told him to stay at the baker's till I got back there. I'll go find out. King, what brought you here, fellow? What is it, Sergeant? wonder why King came here. Well, the way he's acting, I'd say he was trying to tell me there's been trouble at the baker's. Be right with you, boy. Well, you mean you'd go back there right now because your dog's acting so strangely? Maybe it's just because... I know to... King better than you do, Constable. He trailed me here for a purpose, and I'm going to dress and go back. Well, if you have that much faith in King, I'll dress and go along with you. Wait a minute. King's been hurt. Now I know something's wrong there. Let's hurry. It was early morning when Sergeant Preston and the Constable arrived with King at Pop Baker's cabin and learned what had taken place. And they took Grandpa's gold and, and tied us up and, and shot at King. We thought King was killed. Yes, I saw the bullet mark. I'll regret shooting King. He won't give up till he finds him. King wanted to go after him, but I told him to get you, Sergeant. I'm glad you did, Mr. Baker. That's sure some dog to understand like he did. I've trained King since he was a pup constable. Well, get after those crooks, Mr. Baker. <laughs> All right, King, let's go, boy. Goodbye, Sergeant. Bye. Bye, Bye. Sergeant. Bye, Constable. Bye. Which way do you think they went, sir? We'll know in a moment. Not up. All right, Mr. Yeah. Lucky. Find them, King. Find them, fella. They went toward Whitehorse. Let's go. Get up there. Get up there, boy. Meantime, Gil Baxter, with his friends Frank and Jay, had covered their tracks by riding along in a creek for a couple of miles. Then, on the south side of Whitehorse, they rode along the trail toward the pass to Skagway. Finally, they sighted a deserted cabin a short distance ahead of them. Hold up at that deserted cabin just ahead and fix some grub. Yeah, and I could do with a little rest, too. Think it's safe to stop, Gil? I'm off for putting plenty of distance between us and that old man's cabin. What are you so nervous about? We'll be safe enough, Jay. It's early morning. At mile, he'll be on his way back there. When he finds the old man and boy, and especially when he finds out what you did to that dog of his, he'll get hot on our trail. Sure, he'll track us as far as a crick. From then on, he'll be stumped. This isn't the first time the Mounties have tried to trail us. That's right. We always got away. Yeah, but I heard things about that Preston. 
He's supposed to be better than the others at that sort of thing. That's because of that dog that he used to have. <laughs> well, he don't have that dog anymore to help him. Here's the cabin. Put the horses around the back and get inside. Come on, get it. Get it. Take the gold inside with us. All right, let's go. Sergeant Preston and the constable rode with King on the trail of the crooks. After the intelligent dog had picked up the scent of the men who had shot at him and had started along the trail to Whitehorse, the two Mounties could easily pick out the tracks of the crooks' horses. When they reached a point where the trail crossed a narrow and shallow creek, they reined to a halt. Hold there, hold there. Why don't we ford the creek and go on, Sergeant? Oh, this how King's acting? Yes, I do. He ran across the creek and then he came back and now he's sniffing along the bank to the left. I think King's discovered that the crooks went left here and rode along in the water to cover their trail. How can he tell that? The water had covered their trail too well. Not as far as King's concerned. A scent hangs over the water and gradually moves to the bank, clinging to the bushes there. He wants us to follow him along the creek. That means they went that way. All right, let's go. Get up there. Get up. Easy, Blackie. Watch him, Blackie. For some distance, Sergeant Preston and the constable followed the creek until a short distance beyond Whitehorse, King again picked up the tracks on the trail towards Skagway. Rounding a bend in the trail, Sergeant Preston pointed ahead. There's a cabin ahead on the left, and there are horses in back of it. Uh, do you think it could be the men we're hunting? Could be. Last time I came this way, that cabin was deserted. Stop a minute. Go there, boy. Go there, boy. Quiet, King. What shall we do? I'll circle around and approach that cabin from the rear, and we'll find out who's in there. Come on. Get up. Get up there, boy. Inside the cabin, Gil Baxter and the other two crooks had just finished eating when they heard a knock at the locked door. Hey, what do you think that is? I didn't hear anyone ride up. We'll soon find out. Now, come on, Nietzsche, draw your guns and stand on either side of the door. I'll yank it open and invite them in. And we'll have them covered. Well, a couple of Mounties. That's right. We have some questions to ask you. Gil noticed that neither Mounty had drawn his gun. And even though he himself stood without a weapon in his hand... He knew he had the situation well in his favor. He grinned at Preston and spoke. Come on in, both of you. Might as well be comfortable while you ask your questions. Thanks. Well, two more, eh? And withdrawn guns. Yeah, and they got both of you covered. From the insignia you're wearing, I can see you're a sergeant. I got an idea your name is Preston. That's right. From the handbills I've seen, I'd say you're Gil Baxter. Good figuring, Mounty. Good figuring. I don't know how you trailed us so quick with that dog of yours out of the way, but we're ready for you. Now reach and make it quick. Guess we'd better do as he says, Constable. God, we walked right into a trap. It takes more than a couple of Mounties to get ahead of Gil. Yeah, that's right. Now, you said you had some questions. Well, if it's about that dog, I gladly put him out of the way. About the old gold there that Baker lost. I got that, too. I guess there isn't much else to talk about, is there? No, that answers all my questions. Since you so obligingly gave the right answers, you're under arrest in the name of the Queen. <laughs> That's big talk with nothing to back it up. Oh, let's get this over. What are we going to do with them, Gil? Look, if we go back, we hang for murder. So a couple more won't matter. I'm going to have the pleasure of putting a bullet in Preston like I did his dog. What about the other one? You and Jake can settle with him. Well, this is it, Preston. You're through with all your snooping. Now you're going to get that bullet. As Gill raised his gun and pointed it at Sergeant Preston, Frank and Jay watched fascinated, but still keeping their guns trained on the constable. Preston had ordered King to wait outside the cabin. The intelligent dog was just outside the window, which, because of the mild weather, was open. King recognized the voice of the man who had shot at him, and at the same time he caught the scent of the man he hated. Yet his master had told him to wait outside. Knowing King was waiting, Preston spoke sharply to the sneering Gill. Better put down that gun, Baxter. The sharp tone of his master's voice and the word gun, which to King meant danger, caused the great dog to go into action. With a running leap, he sprang through the window and into the room. Hey, he came through the window. Get him! The three crooks momentarily fixed their attention on the snarling dog that rushed toward Gill. Oh, help! Get him away! 
With a leap, King grabbed Gill's gun arm, knocking the crook off balance and sending him crashing to the floor. Get in. No, you don't. Oh, Jay, shoot. At the same time, Jay turned with his gun ready, but the constable jumped him and with the butt of his gun sent Jay limply to the floor. No, no, take him off. Now, get him away. Down, King. Easy, fellow. Oh, that dog. I, I put a bullet in him once. I can't figure it. He has reason to hate you no. for that, Baxter. And no. for his sake, I'm going to settle the score. No. Get to your feet. Now, hold on. I got all their guns, Sergeant. Good. Maybe Baxter can use his fists for a change. Oh, you let me go and I'll knock your head no, off. No, you won't. Take this. No. And this is no, for King. No, 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 no. Uh, looks no. like Baxter's through. Uh, his big mistake was picking on King. That's sure a wonderful dog, sir. I hate that mutt. I wish my bullet had killed him. I'm sure you do, Baxter. Because of a boy's love for a dog, I left King at the cabin. His presence in that cabin brought about the capture of you and your gang. As I said before, Baxter, I arrest you and your men in the name of the Queen. This case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Remember, here's the breakfast that wins the praise of so many top-action Hollywood movie stars. It's delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Your family, too, will go for wheat or rice shot from guns. You'll want to try them starting tomorrow. Remember to get the original crisp, fresh, shot from gun cereal. Always look for the famous big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Get Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Say, I wonder how many of you own United States savings bonds. A lot of you, I'm sure. And I'll bet you're proud of them, too. You see, there's no sure way to save money for your education for your future. So here's a tip. Dad can buy United States savings bonds on the payroll savings plan where he works or on the bond-a-month plan where he banks. Remember, automatic savings is sure saving. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the River Pirates. It was King who made me realize there was something wrong at Collins Landing. But even his instinct wasn't strong enough to penetrate Jug Benson's masquerade. Jug seemed to be a kindly old man, but in reality he was the leader of a desperate band of criminals. We didn't find that out until I was drugged and helpless, and the river pirates were ready to board the Pride of the North. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth... More endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker oats. Quaker and mother's oats are the same. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker 